President Trump met with his Chinese counterpart yesterday and warned something has to be done about North Korea after the Hermit Kingdom launched a missile capable of hitting Alaska. But what can be done? With me here is someone who has thought long and hard about the options to deter a nuclear North Korea, Ash Carter, former defense secretary under President Obama. Thank you so much for being here with Good me. I appreciate here. it. Thank you. So back in 2006, you and uh, former Clinton defense secretary William Perry called for a preemptive strike uh, against North Korea. Do you think that is still viable? Well, that was a very different circumstance sure. uh, now. And uh, we do have a very high level of preparation on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the Department of Defense has options that are available to the president. But you know, this Washington, I, I see what people are writing about now. There's option A and option B, right. and then they look at uh, diplomacy, war, conclude rightly uh, that war is on the Korean Peninsula is not something to trifle with. It's a serious, serious matter uh, there. And then decide that there are no good options. That in the real world of diplomacy and strategic affairs, these are not alternatives that the President of the United States choose. They are an unfolding pattern of coercive diplomacy. And so you do have to begin with diplomacy and with a process that makes the choice not for the American president to choose uh, between starting something on the Korean mm -hmm. Peninsula and giving in to North Korea, but make it North Korea's choice whether this is going to lead to a coercive outcome for them and China as well. And if you take those paths, if it does come to some kind of altercation in the future, we'd be better prepared because we'd have had that time to ready our forces, possibly reinforce Are, our forces. Is the American, is America prepared? I mean, that's what Americans want of to know. Of course, of course. We've, we've, America we've been is at safe this since from, a, from a North Korean missile that could I hit. personally have been at it since 1974. We have consistently improved our military capabilities. South Korea's capabilities have improved. Uh, we have deployed missile defenses, both short range and long range, consistently in, in, in advance of what we anticipate the North Koreans will be doing so that we always stay one step ahead of them. So we're very prepared, but I think it's important not to take the idea of military action on the Korean Peninsula or war lightly. And this is a situation in which we need to get North Korea and China in a corner and not put our president in a corner. Let's turn to Russia. You have known Vladimir Putin since he was a low-level aide. Yes, I did. Uh, do you think he can be a legitimate partner on cybersecurity? I, you know, the, the Russians pulled out the old playbook. Uh, I've seen all this going back to Russian and Soviet days. When confronted with something they've done wrong, ask for U.S. intelligence, old trick. Um, propose a working group. Uh, in, in this case on cyber. But this is like the guy who robbed your house proposing a working group on burglary. It's they who did this. Um, and So was it a mistake for the Trump administration to buy it? Well, I don't think they can buy or we should, that's, that, that can, it's fine to talk to the Russians about lots of things. It's never a problem talking to people. It's a matter of what you say. But in this case, this isn't just a matter of looking backward. It, this is a matter of looking forward. We're going to have elections in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, there are state elections, municipal elections, as well as national elections. There are elections in other countries. Uh, it's important that there be consequences for the Russians in regard to this. And to me, this is just, a, for, you're getting to your question about Putin, a pattern with Putin. In defense, this is why we thought it was so important to stand strong against Russia in Europe, put new U.S. formations in Europe, write a new playbook for NATO, why I'm very skeptical about cooperating with Russia in Syria, uh, why I think it's important that, that we recapitalize our nuclear arsenal because they're doing a nuclear buildup. There are a lot of dimensions to the Russia problem. Okay, so you mentioned things that you did during the Obama administration to confront yeah. Russia, but uh, President Trump continues to and maybe he has a point, and we'll talk about this, fault President Obama for not taking action against Russia when it comes to meddling in the U.S. election. Listen to what he said. He was told it was Russia by the CIA, as I understand it. It was well reported. 
and he did nothing about it. They say he choked. That's the real question is why did he do nothing from August all the way to November 8th? You were his defense secretary. You were in the situation room when this was discussed. Why didn't he act? Well, I think he did take some actions. And as I said, in defense, we took a wide range of actions. Mm -hmm. To me, this was part of a pattern. To me personally, this was a part of a pattern of, with Vladimir Putin. But I, I don't think, I think it's quite clear that that was not sufficient. That's why it's so important to press the Russians now. If it were sufficient, Vladimir Putin's answer to our president wouldn't have been to say, cast doubt upon it or ask for further intelligence from the United States. And that's why, again, this is not just a matter of looking backward. It's an important question for our future um, because it's important that Americans, when they go to the ballot box and those in other countries as well, really understand and be assured that the Russians haven't been there first. No question. There's a lot to deal with in the future. But because you were there, I just have to ask, you said that more could have been done. Did President Obama make a mistake in not doing more? Well, he, he did, uh, took some steps, no question about it. Um, but I think you see from Vladimir Putin's answer right now that more needs to be done. Uh, Putin is not convinced that there are going to be consequences of a magnitude for Russia as a consequence of interfering with the U.S. election that make it unwise for him to do it in the future. Uh, that hasn't been accomplished yet, and that's why it is important to stick with this issue and not be reassured by uh, uh, the, the Russian readout. Another old trick of theirs is to give a readout of a meeting um, uh, which uh, favors them. Um, and so I think it look, going forward, we need to stand strong with Russia and not be reassured uh, and not be diverted by them asking for intelligence, you're, trying to muddy the waters. You're, you're understandably um, loyal to your, to, your, uh, to your former boss, but it sounds like you are not all that comfortable well, with, with I, I, the reaction. I, most of all, I'm loyal to the uh, United States, Absolutely. both the pres current president and the president I served. They both deserve to get from Russia on behalf of the American people something better than what Vladimir Putin offered uh, the other day. And we deserve that too. President Trump deserves that. And um, I think that um, uh, he and his administration need to keep pressing uh, for that, because the business is not done yet, and it's an issue for the future, not just a matter of looking back, but looking forward. Thank you for the, your time this Thank morning. You. Good to be with you, Dana. Thank you so much.